In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning to you all. Today is the third Sunday of Bebe, the Coptic month of Bebe. And this Sunday, along with next Sunday and the past two Sundays, reveal to us the power of God. The power of God. In today's gospel, it's a very simple gospel and probably just two or three points, very brief points this morning. You find that they brought to him a man who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. Demon-possessed, blind and mute. And if you think about that, my beloved, think about how sad that is. It is probably the worst thing that could happen to a human being. Not from such a point of a, of a physical, but from the spiritual point of view. Our goal in our life is to imitate the Lord, is to be united to the Lord, is to have fellowship with the Lord. St. Paul tells us that we are temples, dwelling places of the Holy Spirit, right? So you and I are intended to be dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. God is supposed to be dwelling within you. And if God dwells in a person, then you know the person is filled with blessing, filled with purity, filled with holiness, filled with perfection, filled with all virtue and all gifts, and all grace. It's a big thing. And this is your goal. This is the goal <clears throat> that our Lord, when He came, He came to renew, to restore, to remold, and to erase the original sin. And He did that through His death, resurrection, ascension. And by doing that, he opens for you and me again the way to the kingdom of heaven. That we can be, we don't call it a possession of the Holy Spirit. When somebody possesses something, it means it's by force. But when the Lord says that you are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit, dwelling willingly, willingly by the Spirit who comes, and willingly by the receptacle, the person who accepts the Holy Spirit in their life. And the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a simple thing to be dwelt, indwelt by the Holy Spirit. We all say, oh yeah, we have, we have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, everybody. So you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. But it's not that easy, my beloved. It's not as simple like that. As the Holy Spirit, yes, indeed, we received Him. On which day? When did you receive the Holy Spirit? Baptism? No. Whoever said baptism, go back to first grade Sunday school. <laughs> not baptism. You do not get the Holy Spirit in baptism. In baptism, the Holy Spirit works, yes. He makes the water from dead water to life, <clears throat> excuse me, life-giving water, yes. And the work of the Spirit on the baptismal water and on you, you receive a new nature, but you don't receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit when? Chrismation. When you get the Holy Meirun anointed over various parts of your body on the day of your baptism, okay? It's considered your personal Pentecost. What happened on Pentecost? Eid al Ansara hasal e hulul al Ruh al Qudus alamin ala talamiz on the disciples and those who were in the upper room. The exact same thing happens on the day of your chrismation. And so the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you a new nature. 
I'm going to restore you, remold you, renew you, regain you, and make you like you, like Adam and Eve were before they sinned. And then I'm going to dwell within you. I'm going to take you and graft you into my body, the church of which I am head. This is the Lord speaking. And then we begin the relationship between us and God through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Now, you just heard all of that. I'm going to read to you the first verse. One was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind, and mute. Demon-possessed. So instead of being indwelt by the Holy Spirit, it's the complete opposite. He's now being in, he's been possessed by the devil. What a tragedy. This is something so tragic where someone is possessed by the devil. It's a huge tragedy because, like I just told you, I explained to you that the whole idea is that we are to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So whatever the, the devil, whatever the Lord Jesus Christ and God does, the devil does the opposite. The Lord says, one wife, one husband, life of purity. The devil says, adultery, fornication, lust. The Lord says, love your enemies. The devil says, kill everybody and hate everybody. The Lord says, if somebody asks you for a coat, give them not just your coat, but give them your shirt that's underneath. The devil says, steal. Do you see the point, my beloved? So I'm trying to show you a spectrum. You're not the person, one of us, any of us is not always on this side, okay, which we could be and should be. And God forbid we're closer to this side. It's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. And so when a person draws near to God, the work of the Spirit, the grace of the Spirit in you becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. The more you give your attention to the worldly things, everybody think of a sin that possesses or that controls you or me. Think of it. Okay? Every time you commit and I commit that sin, it pushes us from here from this side to this side. So, the reason why I'm saying this is because this man represents the human race. He represents me and he represents you. And if you don't take your life seriously with the indwelling of the Spirit, if you don't put effort into your life with the Lord, this spectrum is a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. So you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. So the Lord, He comes today and He says, I'm going to free him. I'm going to not free, I'm sorry, I'm going to heal humanity. It says here, he, the blind possess the mute, and he healed him. So the first thing is, you are made as a dwelling place for the Spirit. Please act like it. Please do things in your life. Stay away from the TV and the social media. Throw out your TVs and computers and sit around the Bible in your homes. Believe me, you're laughing now and you're enjoying, later on, you're going to cry because of your children. It's already happening. We cry all day and all night now because of what's happening. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Second point, he healed him. Notice what the crowd said. 
Please take what I'm saying seriously. This is not a routine. We only have one chance in our life. We must live for the Lord. The multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Why did they say that? They said that because in Isaiah 35, 5 and 6, there's a prophecy, not just in Isaiah 35, 5, but throughout the Old Testament, where the Messiah that is to come, he is to do and perform miracles and to heal and to cast out demons. Isaiah 35, 5 and 6 says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Was this man blind? Yes. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. The lame man will leap and the mute, the mute will sing. Is, was he mute? Yes. This is why the people said, wait a minute. Is this the son of David? Meaning, is this the Messiah to come? Is the Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah? So he was right there in front of them. And yet, they did what? They judged him and led to the crucifixion. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ right now comes to your home. And you or I, we judge him. We do that every day, actually. He's in your home. It's time to pray your igbeya at night before you go to sleep. What do we do? It's time to give of your time and your gifts that God has given you. What do we do? We're doing the exact same thing that they have done, yet we don't know that we're doing that. Beloved, the third and final point, the Lord then is accused of being Satan himself. Do you see the utter lies and the disgusting ways that the devil deals with us? At that point in the Lord's ministry, the devil did not know who he was. He did not know that he was the Messiah. Yes, he saw his birth. It was miraculous. He's scratching his horns and thinking, hmm, could this be? I don't know. He goes on the Mount of Temptation. He tempts him three times. He overcomes him. He scratches his horns. And he says, hmm, I don't know. Is this the, is this the Messiah? Because if it is, I got to do something. Okay? Even when the Lord was being presented and being judged by Israel, by Caiaphas, by Pontius Pilate, the scriptures tell us that the devil moved the people to choose Barabbas rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't know. And St. Paul, years later, writes in his epistle that if they knew that this was the king of glory, what? They would not have crucified him. Because the death of Christ means our life. And the devil knew that. The devil knows the Bible well. The devil has faith, but the dead type of faith. And so, at this point, the devil and these people are, a, are telling, are saying, you cast out demons by Beelzebub. You're a devil. Maybe you're even the higher devil, the, the greatest devil. And so then logically, the Lord says, if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided. And a house that is divided against itself cannot be, cannot stand. What keeps our families together, what keeps brother and sister together, what keeps a church together, what keeps a company together, what keeps any group or community together is unity. Once there is a division, everything starts to fall apart. 
In the church, there's a special type of division. The division of a of wrong teaching, heresy. St. Paul says, you should speak all the same things. Every one of you should speak all the same things. And if not, you know what he says? The only time we can turn our backs and walk away from people that don't teach the same thing, he said it twice in his epistles. He said, withdraw from such. Withdraw. Stay away from people that don't teach the right teaching. Fourth and final point. Today's gospel. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. In Malakut, the kingdom is here. With the coming of Christ comes the knowledge of God. With the coming of Christ comes salvation. With the coming of Christ comes peace between heaven and earth. With the coming of Christ comes heaven. And so, my beloved, just remember, our God is here. The kingdom is closer than you think. Consider me to be the Noah. And I'm telling you, the flood is coming. The kingdom of God he is now here at hand. And we must be ready. So every one of you, think about how much time and effort you put in your relationship with the Lord. And focus on it. And grow. If you think it's going to be easy, you misguided. You go to university, college. Do you know what colleges are these days now? Places of indoctrination and, and atheist factories. That's what they are. Places of employment, schools, it's no, safe, no safety anymore. It's hard. You have to be strong. How did the Lord resist the temptation of the devil? He, I think I heard him say, he brought verses from the Bible. So you stand on the rock, the Bible. The Word of God is what will give you strength and help you resist these things. So you study the Word of God. Study the Word of God a lot. Grow in the wisdom of God, in the knowledge of God, in the fear of God, in the love of God. This is your goal. And if you do those things, you will be indwelt by the Spirit. And never will the devil come anywhere near you. Today, the Lord heals this blind, mute, and possessed, demon-possessed man. And he says the same thing to us. He's here, and he wants to heal us. Even though he healed us by his resurrection, his crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and the sending of the Spirit, he knows that we need more healing. And that's why he said, I am, or we say, that he is the true physician. And then he said, I have come not for the healthy, but for the sick. So he comes as a physician. Will you accept his office visit? He has an appointment for you waiting. And that appointment every day is your room in the morning when you wake up. And at night, when you wake up, when you go to sleep, that's the appointment to meet your physician in your prayers. This is the appointment once a week to take the Holy Communion. This is something, my beloved, that we need to understand that the power of God and the kingdom of God is truly at hand. May the Lord give you strength and help you and I to overcome and to truly see the healing power of the Lord and that we may understand that the kingdom 
of God is truly here. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.